If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. I want, you know, I think I want to take that away from you for a while. Yeah, I got to say, I got to say that. You line? Think yeah. Anybody can say it. Yeah, I think somebody else can yeah. say it. Right. Have Inside go- this episode. You did that last I time, I like right? that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we start off this podcast with a 30-minute intro. We talk about Organifi's green juice and hot and cold therapy and the immune system. Adam isn't getting sick as often as he used You're so to. so healthy these days. And yeah. he thinks it's due to those two things. And a little magic. Or the lack mm. of all the muscle I have in my body. I think that was just too expensive. Too much tissue. muscle. <laughs> yeah, too, I, oh, wow. I had too much muscle before. Yeah. Now this whole- You've been downsizing. The yeah. Bradley Cooper look that I'm going for <laughs> is, is uh, just way more advantageous yeah. for staying healthy. Uh, and then we talk mm. about Adam's eyelashes. They are- uh, Gorgeous. They're yeah. very nice. Gorgeous. Yeah, you get the giraffe eyes. Very eyes. inviting. When I put some, some sunglasses that I put on, they, it drives me crazy because I have to clean them on a regular basis because they-, they, they they, they tickle your sunglasses. Now, does your cheeks also touch the lenses? lenses <laughs> Fuck you. In the front? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck then, we, you. then we talk about getting Fuck the kids you your skinny face. into working out. <laughs> Halloween decorations. What? We talk about the UFC, uh, this last UFC crazy stuff wow. that happened. Wow, wow, wow. Electric wow. night of fights. Insane. Uh, and then we talk about Bezo, the, uh, the dude who's running Amazon. Uh, raising everybody's minimum wage there. What is his we strategy? We know what you're doing, sir. We know exactly what he's doing. Uh, by the way, we are sponsored by Organifi. We did mention them. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump and use the mind pump code, just mind pump. Yeah, it's easy. You'll get twenty percent off. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, do you have any tips on reducing the pump? That's right. You heard me right. This person doesn't wait, want. Wait, wait. Reducing? They, they don't want to pump because they're rock climbers. Mm. And when you get a pump in your forearms, you fall to your death. Yeah, that's not good. So what can this person do? The next question was, are there any benefits to warming up in longer ranges of motion than the ones you train in? In other words, if I'm trying to warm up my deadlift, should I do a deadlift with a two-inch mm. deficit and then go into my regular deadlift? All Will depends that- on how you're doing it. Thank you, Justin. You just yeah. gave it away. Boom. Next question was, uh, what kind of advice do we have for people who are trying to shift to lifting heavy weights? You know, it can be dangerous if they don't have a spotter. Uh, What advice do we have for them? And finally, the last question, do we think that the breast implant illness stuff is real or is it BS? Find Mm. out in this part of the episode. Ta-ta, terrific. Also, uh, dude, interjection, dude, half off. You guys, you guys excited about the half-off sale? What? Map, What's half-off sale? Maps Aesthetic. Do tell. 50% off all month long. It's literally what I'm saying. We took the price, cut it in half, so you're saving a tremendous yeah. amount. Maps Aesthetic is our bodybuilder-inspired maps program. The volume is high. The pumps are intense. You are in the gym between five to six days a week. It's pretty freaking awesome. Arguably the most popular program we've put out. That's true. Uh, if you go to mapsblack.com and use the code BLACK50, that's B-L-A-C-K, the number 50, no space, at checkout, you'll get 50% off. Also, if you go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, you can learn about our other MAPS programs and our MAPS bundles where we combine multiple MAPS programs and discount them. Make sure you go check them out. T-shirt time! And it's t-shirt time. Oh, oh, now it is. Oh, yeah. Now it is, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> now you can get excited. All right. We have had a mass exodus from iTunes over to Facebook. That's what we way. wanted, Doug. Whoa. We want everybody over on Facebook. If you Moses didn't hear, had spread the waters. If you didn't hear before, we are actually picking reviews off the Mind Pump Facebook page also. so You can if, do both. Yeah. Absolutely. We Increases your odds of winning. Yeah. 100%. Leave one on iTunes and leave one on Facebook. I just gave away the I mean, secret. We're leaving very, a little heavy on Facebook these very, days. Very so. smart move, Sal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give away. Go, let's so go we're giving it. away 10 shirts. Whoa, 10 shirts going Jeez. out. So the ten first shirts. one, since there were so few ones on iTunes, uh, there's only one there, which is Mike2128. And all the rest of you are from Facebook. You know who you are. Jessica T. Carmen, Jessica Blade, Peter Sestick, Ruth Lewis, Kimberly Dudek, LMT, Jacob Carpenter, Timothy Bates, Susan Smith, Alec Gladwell, 
All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com and send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Thank you. Congratulations. So Katrina had like a stomach virus? I, I don't know what she had. She said she thinks she had the flu, but she's still not She's still not 100% today. I mean, she's working today, but she's not 100%. And you she haven't took, got anything? No. I, bro, I've been good lately. It's mm. twice she's been sick around me that I, I've been good. I really I really have tried to like unpack like okay what is What's it What's the secret? Yeah, now? what am I doing that so you well? You your veggies or what? No. Well, you know, I mean since we've all been together there's definitely lots of little things that, you know, I do that I didn't do in the past that um that I'm sure contribute to it. I mean, we've talked before about uh the hot coal contrast like that was never like a regular thing in my life yeah. like mm-hmm. I don't ever now go uh I mean and, and I and I'll be honest like I'm not consistent. I'd like to say that every single morning I'm good about taking a freezing cold shower. I'm not, but I definitely do it way more frequently than I ever did in my life before. You know, I, we go up to refuge all the time and do plunge like that. Never have I been somebody who consistently did like a multivitamin or like a green juice type of thing like we do now with Organifi. Like that's become a very regular thing where I take mm-hmm. that in. So, you know, the infrared sauna is something I use. So there's a lot of these little tools that I use on a regular basis that I wonder if that's, if it's, if it has some, some support benefits to, Mm -hmm. you know, my immune system when it comes to being around people that are sick, because in the past, Oh dude, my, I feel like a wuss. Like, yeah, I would. Someone would be like sneeze, and I'd be like, "Fuck!" I'll be, you know, like I'm gonna be sick in three days. You know, that's just how I've always been. But to be able to take care of Katrina, be all around her and stuff, and to not get sick, this is the second or third time, just in like the last year and a half or so, or. I've been good. I'm actually going to order. Uh, I'm going to see about getting myself a, a sauna for the house. Just a small two person. The one, one man one. Oh, it's like a two, two person. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't going to do. Uh, and now I'm not going to do the little tent one. I'm going to get the actual. Okay. Like a, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to. We'll talk to the to the sunlight and people. Um, but uh, you know, after talking to uh, Dr. Cabral, mm-hmm. what were those those studies that he was quoting? What, like, what was that? A 49 percent reduction in all cause, all cause mortality? mortality. Yeah. For 19 minutes a day of sauna. Pretty significant. Yeah. And then the other point that he made that I thought was really good was how, you know, when you get into heat, and this is why you feel so blah and relaxed and why you, Mm -hmm. if you've ever done stretches in a hot room and you know you've got such a greater range of motion. Oh, yeah. It's easy. it, it, It depresses the central nervous system. It brings it down into this parasympathetic state. And, and you know what? He said it's a great tool to balance out the, sympathetic state which you know i mean I'm everybody's in always in the sympathetic state yeah. it made so much sense what he said about you know the cold uh cold plunge therapy too because i know like that's the main benefit i'll get from that is that alert of you know that 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 sympathetic like drive that you get right after doing it yeah. which is great and it, it, but you have to use it that way in terms of like its benefits and so like in the morning or something like that if i'm going to do that yep. along you know uh that with coffee but yeah like to go to uh use heat you know for like i've been looking into that as well like where i could do that after a workout oh, yeah. no i'm going to get one and i'm going to do it uh every day i'm going to do 20 minutes every single day if i have it in my house i know i'll do it <laughs> And, you know, I, I, tr- I, I don't track things as like I, I write things down, but I know myself pretty well. So I'll let you guys know what effect, because I've never done a sauna that consistent, you know, th- like every day for, for. Yeah, I've been, I've been using ours since I probably have used ours more than anybody. I'm pretty sure. Like, it, yeah, I'm pretty consistent about using it almost every time I train here. So how often, like how many days a week would you say? Well, shit. I mean, if I were to say average, I would say three. But I mean, there's times where I'm hitting it every every day. That's that, pretty good. Yeah, no, I, I hit it on a regular basis. And what Just, do you notice from the from the frequency of or, or the consistency? Well, see, it's so hard, you know, like to, to, to like that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if it's if the benefits that I'm getting are directly from that or all the other things. I haven't teased out one thing to say. Oh, okay, the sauna is doing this for me. Oh, mm-hmm. the green juice from Organifi is doing this for me. Like, yeah. it's hard to say what is making me feel that much better but the things that i noticed with the infrared because we it, the infrared sauna i definitely noticed my my psoriasis and i do notice that i'm not as sore like my recovery is a little bit better so those two those okay. two things i that i i feel like i can tease that out and be like okay when i'm not being consistent with the sauna i do notice the psoriasis and i do need, tend to be more sore quote interesting unquote. has anybody ever told you you look like you wear eyeliner sometimes Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's because I do sometimes. Oh, uh, do you really? Uh, no. Yeah, you got yeah. the dark... Uh, bro, that's a thing. That's a thing that... That's a desirable thing. 
So is the long eyelashes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no. I, was just, I think I was, I, I was, I was real close earlier. to being a chick. That's what happened. Were you? Yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I was real close. Fairy face yeah. hunk. Yeah. Right. I was, I was, <laughs> Hashtag. I was staring at you earlier. God was like, was uh, uh, girl, guy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, uh, boy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, real close, though, right yeah. before. I was yeah. getting lost. You know what I mean? I was looking at yeah. I was like, what am I doing? fluttering his eyelashes at me. Why do I keep staring? No, girls when I was younger used to... Uh, they would. It, I felt like I was being teased. Obviously, it was a, a compliment. But when you're a when you're a bo- young boy growing up, you don't want to be complimented on your eyelashes and things like that. It's yeah. just not. It's just funny not, too because right. you don't know. You like, think you're oh, being thanks. teased, but in reality, the girls are saying they're no, flirting with you. No, no, no. They were yeah, complimenting. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you're right. Yeah, that's. I mean, that this is insecure boy me when I'm younger. You know, yeah. talking to you right now when I said that. Looking back now, I thought, oh, that's a that was yeah. a good. All a good you want to hear from girls when you're a young boy is how how yeah. strong and yeah. tough yeah. you are. You're so yes. big. Yeah. You're yeah. so tough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate. It. My yeah. son's got, my son's got giraffe eyelashes. He's got these super long <laughs> giraffe ridiculous. eyelashes. You ever seen a giraffe's eyelashes? I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I've never actually had a yeah. Yeah. like that. He's got he's such long. It's funny. This, uh, I was training him this weekend. Oh, I love, I love the fact that I can train my kid and that he's he's kind of into it. You know, he's kind of getting into it. And this last workout we did yesterday is the first workout where he's making this face when he's lifting mm-hmm. where before when he's working out, you could tell, you know, when you first start working out, I don't know if you guys remember this when you were kids, but I can distinctly remember as a 14 year old kid lifting weights in the beginning, you have such little control and strength yeah. that it's even hard to harness and right. generate force in a direction. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it feels kind of, you remember when you get shaky? Just trying to stabilize. Bro, I, I remember so when you you're go, like you, unsure about. Yeah, it. I've talked lower, about this on yeah. the show before. When I first the first lifting we started in my buddy's garage, and to do the bar to bench press the bar, I used to have to have one of my buddies spotting the bar to assist me, and then the other buddies pinning my shoulders down so they didn't roll forward. Oh wow! And so that was literally how I bench pressed. Yeah. Two guys. And one you were guy, like nineteen, right? Younger than that, I was. Well, I was, no, I was in high school, so I was seventeen. Seventeen, yeah. yeah. But you know that feeling where it almost feels like your your muscles are laughing, where it's like yeah. do, 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 like they're. Yeah. That's what it was like. But this last workout, we just so this has to be now the. We've probably done a grand total of I don't know fifteen or sixteen workouts, so not a ton. But this is the first one where I can see him like make this face where he's kind of gritting his teeth yeah. and he's like, oh, and he's like pushing. <gasps> yeah. And so I'm walking him through the form on the bench press, drive your feet in the floor and stick your chest out and go all the way down. And so then he's doing it. And then, you know, the first time he did it, I had him use the, the women's bar. So it was at 35 pounds, but he was all over the place. Right. Mm-hmm. Now he's like really good. And now he could do five good, clean reps with the 45 pound bar. So I, he did three sets. Nice. So I called Jessica out. I texted her. I'm like, hey, come out to the garage real quick. I, I, want, I want you to see this. As soon as he sees Jessica, it's so funny. He's like, it's got to be tough now. Yeah. All right, here we go. And he's come like, on, Dad. Yeah, yeah, so funny. <laughs> My daughter comes out and she's working out with us too. And it was, uh, it's, so, it's so cool because I can see I'm, I, I'm trying my hardest to not push it onto them. You know what I mean? I just want them to have a good experience so it becomes a part of the life. Oh, totally. Yeah. I, I had the same kind of experience over the weekend because I have that PRX all set up and uh, Courtney was gone in, in Cabo. And so I'm just hanging out with the boys and, you know, I'm down there and I'm I'm just like, well, I'm going to get a set in, you know, for myself and just, you know, went downstairs and turn on some heavy metal. And like, I'm thinking it's just going to be me, you know, in there. And all of a sudden they, they come in, you know, to the room and they start like lifting. I could just see them out of the corner. I just watching everything I was doing. Oh, and then, so cool. And then my youngest starts like, like, yeah, like starts headbanging to like some no. like heavy metal. I was like, oh dude. I, I think this is going to catch on. Isn't you that know? great? Yeah, oh, I That's so it. great. Did you have you guys decorated? Do you guys decorate for Halloween or anything like that, or fall? Yeah, you yeah, guys do that. Just Christmas. Did a little bit of that. Christmas is the only thing that we have a bunch of stuff for. Although I, Katrina, we'll see if she breaks out some some fall stuff. I know we have some things in there before, but our house is still not complete. I mean, I still have the, I have two empty room, three empty rooms if you count one of the bedrooms in my house so we're still piecing together yeah. uh, the uh, place Courtney's really into it because it's this is like her birthday month or whatever so she's like always like had this attachment to Halloween and so there's just skeletons and fucking you know spiders and everything all over my house right now uh, oh no because we were we were hanging out and, I'm, and my kids got so excited so two things I did first I bought this little it looks like a Super Nintendo but it's not but it's loaded with like 800 old school Nintendo games. Oh, you mean the one we have yeah, here? Yeah, it's here. like this one, right? It's yeah. it's similar but different. It's I don't think it's I think it's all hacked games games from uh, China. Uh, 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 uh. So I, I used to have that one. I bought it at the mall. 
Yeah. And the games are like half of them are in China. There's like 15 different versions of fucking Super Contra and, and Mario Brothers. I I've saw you guys before. playing Contra. Sick. I yeah. saw I saw Jessica's Instagram. Yeah. Dude. I, d- I DM'd her. I was like, is that Contra? Dude. Yeah. Super. So Nostalgia I play, right I there. I play with my, with my son and he's never played that game before. So he's getting killed and I'm winning. So I'm like, see, your dad can play. Yeah. <laughs> we, and we beat the whole game. It was a blast. And then, you know, we, it was, that was in the morning. And I looked at the kids. I'm like, you guys want to go get some Halloween decorations? And my daughter loses her mind because she... My daughter's so strange, right? When she was one years old, <laughs> when she was one, we had this scary skull uh, like decoration for Halloween that lit up and made this scary sound, which would terrify any one-year-old. Any <laughs> one-year-old would have ran and got scared. I, I turned it on when she was one just to see what her reaction would be. She runs over to it and says, my baby, and walks around with it like it's her fucking doll. <laughs> and she's always been like that. Like uh, She loves... Scary, like gro- the macabre. She loves yeah. grotesque, scary shit. So she's like, I want something really scary. So I'm like, okay. So we go to Target. Of course, Target has nothing that that like suits her fancy. Everything there is like Halloweeny or whatever. Nothing too crazy. She goes, we have to go to Party City. They have the scary stuff. So we go there, and she ends up making me buy a severed clown head that's hanging from oh a my hook. God. <laughs> And it's it's totally not appropriate, uh, but she's she made me she's like begging me to buy it. I'm like, are you sure you're not gonna this is not gonna scare you? No. So I buy that, and then I buy a severed arm that she put under the door so it looked like someone's hand. Got, wow. And she fucking loves that shit. So anyway, it was it was, it was that a lot of fun. and com- she's gonna be a she's gonna have a personality, man. Bro, she yeah. loves standing up in front of her audience and doing comedy at comedy. her. Comedy. That's probably have a dark sense crazy. Of humor. Totally, total dark sense. Totally of humor. is gonna yeah. have that. Dark lucky, sense. she's gonna be lucky. Guy is gonna find her. That's a that's a. Lucky <laughs> dude to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's really really cool. So anyway, that was a good time. But I, I we got to talk about the fight, dude. The, oh, you mean the you mean the most epic UFC card ever, bro? Oh, oh dude, was, ever? You know it insane. broke. I, my favorite was the Lewis fight. I don't know about you guys, dude. Every fight was epic, dude. Yeah. How? When was the last time you saw two knockouts, a TKO? And a fucking championship tap out, that, right. and then the guy jumps over the ring and fights the it gets, crowd. It goes ape shit. What? Yeah, yeah. Damn. What? What's uh, that guy's name? Pandemonium. What's that guy's name? What do they call him? The 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 the, the black dude. Uh, is his name Lewis? Yeah, Lewis. Okay. What was his? What's his nickname? I don't remember. Black his, monster or something yeah, like that. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, I follow him on Instagram already. Oh, now. I know. Oh, yeah. Just, what is it? Joe hooked my him up. balls were hot. You know, bro. <laughs> he took his pants off. <laughs> bro, oh, bro. I died, dude. I was laughing for he about was getting, five minutes. He was getting his ass kicked. Until yeah. the very end, and then just laid the. Oh yeah, up. I didn't even say that. Lit right? him up. A comeback last yeah. ten, 10 sec- seconds. Last ten seconds knockout punch. Oh my God, I mean, dude. he put him so to epic. S- put him to sleep. That was dude. nasty. Yeah. Wow. And then he lays down, like trying to catch his breath, you know, because he's so exhausted. Oh my God, dude, he threw everything out there. In he's the, such a crowd favorite. But yeah, I love that guy. Khabib and and, and what's his name? Conor. McGregor. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude, that. That what was do you a guys, battle royale. What do you guys think about the the end of that? That well, whole shit that happened. First of all, there was it, I don't know if I watched well, it I mean, I, me off, I'm gonna be honest. I've been following all I've been following all this stuff leading up and like I'm kind of a dork with some of those things where I'll watch uh Oh, there's a couple guys online, and I should shout him out because I can't remember his fucking his handle. But these, there's M- these MMA geeks that literally will take a press conference like that all Connor had, and they will break down each jab or statement they said. Like, where is that coming from? Mm-hmm. And so you can find out. Like a lot, there's a lot of there's a lot of back story to this yeah. this whole fight. And yeah, like mafia shit and like there's, really. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The whole rat thing that he's talking about and stuff that tied to nine and eleven and shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you what do you mean? What was he saying? Yeah. So there's so there's stuff in there where he's talking about he's Connor is calling him a rat and he's I believe it's his. I forget what relative to him that he's referring to, uh, or and, and I, I believe it's a relative and not just a close friend, but somebody who's very close to him in his camp is tied to nine uh, eleven shit and 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 ratting people out on that and and uh, to save his own ass. Mm. And so there's a lot of fucking there's some behind the scenes. I knew it because Connor really got in his fucking head. I mean, who would have that reaction after the fight unless he really just mental ninja'd him like going into that fight? I was like, wow, dude, he did a number on him. Yeah, you know, 
And then and then the, don't forget when when Connor threw the the what is it the dolly at the mm-hmm. bus, right? Mm-hmm. You know that crossed the line, right? That, For sure, that really crossed the line. Well, and you know you know why he did that. What led to that, right? Yeah, I guess he, his buddy got smacked around by. Yeah, so Khabib Khabib and his crew saw his buddy and they were talking shit to each other back and forth, and Khabib kind of grabbed his buddy by the shirt and then slapped him in the face. And they all kind of teamed up on him, and that's when they went and got on the bus. Yeah. And so then they find they, someone comes and gets Connor and says, "Bro, he cornered me and slapped oh. me in the face." There and was legit bad blood. Oh in man, this, in this fight, and I think that's why it was so epic. Uh, and, and Khabib brought it, man. He he came to fight. You yeah, know, I want night. it was crazy. I want I want Nate Diaz to fight Khabib. That's what I want. I want oh, that's, he'll, Nate will get killed. You, yeah. It doesn't matter. I don't think that he'll. Not that I think he's going to win, but uh, you, you know. The, well, I want to see the oh, rematch. This I'm whole like talking oh, shit. I, think, I think the best fight I want is rematch. What will happen is Tony Ferguson. I mean, Tony yeah. Ferguson is next. Ferguson looks amazing. Yeah, bro. He. I mean, Pettis is no no joke. Either. That was a great fight. No. It was an incredible fight. That was a great and, fight. Oh my god, how bloody they got and they're smiling and everything. Oh, oh what a! Cra- I was so bummed awesome. he broke his hand because that was yeah. a brawl. That was a bunch of ninja stuff. in But bunch of weird. Yeah, that hand. Stand like flip kick thing. What the fuck? It was awesome. It was yeah. like, looked like he was doing a what's that like skate- capoeira or what's something? What's that skateboard move when you you hold uh, yeah. on your skateboard? Oh, kick flip. That's or totally or what he was. Uh, hand, yeah, hand, hand plant. Sta- hand plant. Yeah. Is it yes. called a hand, hand plant? plant? That's yeah. what it looked like. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. Now I, I want to. So that's the thing about this. First off, here's the, here's my issue with the and I go. I know why they do it. For for a lot of it is because it it generates a lot of money. Okay, so mm. that's a big part of it. You know, Muhammad Ali was the guy that really, really, uh, I guess, um, what's pioneered the. Word? the uh, yeah, like you come out and you talk a lot of the shit. Hype, yeah. You are gonna make way more money, and it's this is why Connor is the highest paid fighter. It's yeah. not because he's the best. He's, oh, he's good. The showman. He's good. I'm not gonna not gonna say he's not. He's he's not good. He's definitely good. He's not the greatest of all time. He gets paid that much because the you want to watch this guy fight because he's he talks so much shit and he generates so much. It's how we look what he did with he was brilliant with Mayweather. Yep. Did you guys know absolutely brilliant? Do you guys know that a lot of the stuff was you know will he ever come back? He made a hundred million dollars on Mayweather, and so there was this you know you just never make anything like that. I mean, do you know that he he's he project- made fifty million going 50 into it, right? Fifty million dollars. Yeah. That's not including- and he sold out of all of his whiskey. Right. That's not to include the whiskey that yeah. he sold off of that. And I'm deal- sure he gets a piece of the pay per view. Or is that counted? No, pay-per-view? that's the fifty million. Oh, okay. So okay. part of his fifty million is that is the, because the pay per view broke records right it broke records it was one of the most watched fights ever and that's just and that's just in our time now where people r- steal streaming yeah. so imagine what really was what i mean that i mean the whole well, world was watching that fight. he had a lot of ring rust going in and been two years since mm. he'd done an mma fight so here's so here's the thing because i was thinking about this because i know why they do this all the shit talk and all this part of it is to generate you know uh you know revenue because people want to watch it and i get all that and the other part of it is sometimes they really do hate each other but I also was thinking to myself, like, why do we hate this so much when we do when we like the fight? Like, we like them to fight in the ring, but we don't like a lot of people don't like the the pre and post fighting and throwing of shit and bullshit. Mm-hmm. And if you really think about it, you know, fighting sanctioned or organized fighting or even war, even war, for a long time had rules, and both sides agreed upon the rules because shit otherwise can get deadly and brutal. And so we had this level of honor and respect where here's the rules. Because back in the day, bare knuckle fighting, you know, it was two men and they would fight in an alley and they made and they would follow the rules. One yeah. guy would say to the other guy, okay, fists only, no kicking, no biting, no whatever. What's the ultimate resolve? And the, and the crowd would watch. And if somebody, if one, this is what it, how it used to be back in the day. If one of the men in a bare knuckle fight bit the other guy, he would get destroyed by the yeah, mob. Yeah, ostr- ostracized. No, destroyed. Yeah. He would get destroyed by the mob. So nobody ever dared do anything like that. And I know why they do that. It's because it's a way to allow the violence and whatever to happen, but to also control it so it doesn't spread into... It's like you could have two communities. Because yeah. think about this this way, okay? <clears throat> Back in the day with these bare knuckle... Because I, I know the history of bare knuckle boxing. It's, it's very, very old or fighting. Back in those days, there were communities that hated each other. Mm-hmm. You'd have the Irish fight the Italian or the Jews or whatever, and the whole community would be behind their fighter. Yeah. And the whole community, another community would be behind the other fight. And the reason why they didn't just go to war 
because they could have yeah. was because they agreed. Well, they had, they had their own champion. And that's they had, it. Their champion represented their community. That's and, it. And, and, and you know, they, they figured out that was a lot less casualties, you know, that way. And so they could work it out, whatever just, you know, shit they were going through. They could work it out with their champions. That's right. And it was like that with war for a long time where they would, they would decide on a field. Everybody would line up and we would fight in a particular way. Wouldn't that be cool if that's yeah, how we did? a lot more civil. Wouldn't that be cool if that's how we did modern war? Like you just, you got to find a representative of your country. That would be cool. And let's just put them in the ring and, and then they duke yeah. it out. Oh my God. It's like, it's like the new Olympics. <laughs> you, yeah, we'd have like, a- To we, the death. We'd have a genetically modified, roided out, like, like scientific <laughs> experiment. You know what I mean? We'd crossbreed a human with a bear. You know I mean? <laughs> and nobody would care. Man yeah, bear Of course they would because yeah, it's yeah. safer. One guy yeah. is risking his life oh, for this entire uh, yeah. country. Entry. I'll tell you right now. Just constantly training, just all montages, yeah. like all day long. Uh, if it was world leaders that fought, like Russia would rule the world right now. Putin would kick the uh, shit yeah. out of he's yeah, a yeah, judo we... black belt ex KGB. <laughs> fucking, he'd yeah, beat the crap he'd beat the shit out of Trump. He would, but anyway, 100%. yeah. So that's I think why I get so upset because I see this, I see him jumping out of the cage and doing all this stuff. Like, oh man, that doesn't. First of all, it doesn't look good on the sport because already people criticize you know combat sports and say that they're brutal. And that they're not civilized, and that they're disgusting. And I can always argue with them when people follow the rules and shake hands. The afterwards. truth is, you know though, I mean? here's the thing, though, and here's a, and this is the fact of the matter is this: that fight, because of that, will go down as one of the most memorable fights ever. Yep. And the and, rematch is going to make twice as much. Money. And so, oh you know, God. one could, uh, here's the thing: Dana White, Joe Rogan, all of them, when they when it first happened, said what they're supposed to say, mm -hmm. which is, "Oh my God, I can't believe terrible, this terrible, black yeah. black eye on the sport." Right. Yada yada yada. Behind closed doors, they're shaking hands and like, they have to be going. Yeah. Fucking a! Yeah. This is just, this it's is going to make double that. It the is, next time. of yeah. course, because part of what made you know what's I made boxing people fall asleep to boxing and what MMA was starting to kind of dip for a minute there was, you know, if there's no drama involved in it, it's it's fighting and it's war. Un unfortunately, and it, it's unfortunate because there are there are lots of people that love the sport and are there to watch the sport. But to be honest, a big majority of the people aren't there to watch the mm -hmm. sport. They're there to see two people who don't like each other beat each other up and one one man stand or one yeah. woman stand after the fact. And this is only going to feed into but that. But you know what? I'll tell you yeah. something right now. If we go back 60 years, go back in time, 50 or 60 years, if a boxer after a fight jumped over the ropes and hit somebody else and it turned into a big old thing, they would have the, the, the average person would have been appalled. Doesn't matter. People though. would have been disgusted. But they, Think, they times would, have changed. It doesn't. No, that's not true. Uh, Holyfield and Tyson. Oh, I was. I wa okay. I watched every. And this is an example I gave Damn. Katrina when we were talking about this. I've watched almost not, not almost all Tyson's. I've watched at least ten of Tyson's plus fights on pay per view. You know which one I remember? I mean, vividly remember right. that fight. Did you see? Sure. His yeah. tweet. He's yes, like, I, he's, like, yes. He's, like, yeah. he's like, what a disgusting, you know, like display, or whatever. And then some guy underneath him was like, you literally bit somebody's ear off. <laughs> 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 How did he? Die? But like, I mean, how that, dare he? I know, right? Like, oh, but that whole oh, that, that whole so perfect that whole rivalry. It didn't. I mean, initially everybody is disgusted by it, but that's just how human nature. We're disgusted by, it, but then we can't look away. I know. Yeah. We can't no, no, look you, away. We want it now. More people will tune in. You made a good. You make a good point. If we don't want it to exist that way, we don't watch it. Exactly. But the problem is we want it. Yes. And I think that's what pisses people off. It is. People it, don't like a mirror in man, their face. That's what it is. You showing them what they what you they, don't like that you like it. Exactly. It, but it's it is. It's that's better. the truth. Yep. That's, that's 100. percent It is the truth, and it, this will go down as one of the most memorable fights ever. Not because Khabib beat Conor McGregor, because that whole debacle they hate that happened. Each other. Just yes. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it's gonna drive ratings and so i you know it's funny so when you hear the guys say that on on yeah. live they'll TV, be tuning in yeah <laughs> yeah it's like oh my god black eye on the sport this is unbelievable blah, yeah. blah 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 and they're all upset meanwhile they're like holy shit we, we're gonna make a fuck ton of money after yeah. all this that's gets crazy that they're generating that much money now with mma yeah well nobody else has except for connor yeah i know but that's insane yeah. you know what i mean that's absolutely insane did you guys see uh Bezos and Amazon, what the, what what he's doing with their with oh, everybody's oh with the fifteen dollar minimum wage. He's raising every he's raising their minimum wage up for all of Amazon. Just um, just Amazon employees, of course. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he can't yeah. only do that yeah, with Amazon, right? right? But uh, I I think what's what, he raising it to? I don't remember. I'm what pretty the, sure it's fifteen. Yeah, I think he's raising it up to fifteen. Well, isn't that 
I don't understand. It, it That's sounds, not minimum wage. What's minimum wage right 13, now? Thirteen, isn't it? No, or, no. Federal minimum wage is lower than that. Some states have. It I was higher. just saying because like San Francisco is like fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, no. Yeah. He's he's raising across the board what the minimum that they're going to pay people, right? Yeah. And and it's funny because you know economists and people who know how companies like his tend to get rid of their competition have made some speculations and I think they're I think they're right on. I think what he's going to do and we'll watch and see is he's going to raise his bottom employees up to 15 or whatever the number is. I think it is 15. And then he's going to go lobby and help promote and push minimum wage up, raise minimum wage federally. Oh, wow. And and now talk about crushing your competition. And, exactly, that way. that's and, a dirty play. Exactly, mm. and companies have done it before. Walmart done it before. Mm. And what people will do, people, it'll cripple. It'll cripple everybody, dude. It's, and, I, you know who's this is? I have. He'll a, kill all the small guys. I have a good client friend of mine who owns like uh, she's up to like eleven McDonald's now, and minimum wage is one of the most crippling thing that that fucks her. Yep. Is like because. She's like, this is, this, I mean, she's like, I got to pay a, a, a kid who's running a register, yeah. you know, $15 an hour. And it's like, are you kidding me? And then, but then my manager gap is not there. So then, and then you have somebody who you want to have been five years in the business, like act, maybe even have a degree or something that manages the oh. whole facility. It's like, you know how much I have to pay them now because the, the register kid is getting paid $15 an hour. So doing- I'm reading a crazy book right now. just talking all about how the future is all automated. Yep, everything's going to be automated, yep. and you, you know it's in, it's a matter of time. And this is these are steps in that direction already. We're already seeing this kind of play yeah, out. Yeah, they're creating what they're doing is they're creating artificial market signal because at some point things will be automated anyway. But what they're doing is they're making it happen faster yep. by creating these artificial market signals. But what Bezos is doing, this is a strategy that big business has done before to eliminate their competition. Mm. What they will do is they will lobby government, and it sound it makes them sound good too. Like, oh look. Right. You know, Bezos is supporting the little guy. He wants minimum raise to go, uh, minimum wages to go up. No, the reality is he has the money to pay his employees a little bit more. He knows the small competitors don't. Yeah. And so, if minimum wage goes up, his small competitors are done, and he increases his market share. And this has been a strategy that this is why this is how minimum wages have always been used. Actually, since day one, is to eliminate competition. And so, it's it's actually quite. It's yeah. it's it's brilliant, but it's also snaky, and I you know. But this is the game, man. It's the right. game how it works. Well, I mean, I, I don't I don't blame him. I mean, I, I, it's a you you're using the laws that everybody else has voted in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like every this is why this is the the consequences of of doing things like that that people just don't. Yeah. They're, they're it's the unintended consequences, right? You yeah. don't. We don't think about it. It sounds real good when you're a young kid that's voting and you're and you're just starting your your career and work. And you want a raise because you have a minimum job, a minimum mm-hmm. wage type of position, and so it sounds good to you that you get to get a raise well, for a dollar or mm-hmm. whatever. And now here's the other part to that. So, because a lot of people, again, who don't know how these things work, will say, "Oh, that's a good thing. He's doing a great thing. Oh, he's going to advocate for higher minimum wages. He's for the little guy." And I just explained why he's probably not. He's trying to eliminate competition. But another article comes out now that talks about how Amazon's hourly workers are losing their monthly bonuses and stock awards. So that they can have a minimum wage increase. Oh wow! So all you he's know, already taken he's away. trading one for the other, right? Knowing that this well, is now and an think about this: how gangster is this? Meanwhile, he's also one of the companies too. That's he's, I mean, building to automate probably ninety percent of those oh, positions yeah, yeah. too. No, yeah. So it's like I'm going to pull. I'm going to pull stock from you. Advocate for uh, minimum wage to Pour minimum wage to go up. Meanwhile, we're spending money to actually pretty much replace those positions across the board. So it's like enjoy your dollar an hour more for the next two to three years before mm-hmm. I find a way to, you know, automate your position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking mm-hmm. it, people have no idea what they're signing up for no, dude, when they that, when they vote for shit like that. No, man. they have no idea. But this is the strategy, and this is how big companies for a long time have taken out. Walmart did it a while ago. I remember Walmart was like the one of the biggest supporters. Of increasing minimum wage, and on the surface, you think to yourself, like, why would they do that? They're they're a huge, and then you realize, oh, they know they don't pay that anyway. They already pay a little bit more, they're, and they know that their little tiny mom and pop shops, yeah, they can't compete with that. Can't compete, and sure enough, they yeah, they increase business. they increase their market share, and that's the that's the name of the game. Wow. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. 
For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. All right, first question is from Neil Patterson, 1969. Do you have any tips on postponing the pump? I do indoor rock climbing, and it is always the forearm pump that is the limiting factor. Ooh. Yeah, you know what? This this actually, this is the opposite of what you typically have yeah. people ask you to do. Oh, this is, I, I can identify with this because I mean, I remember in the beginning, like just getting the pump, I'm like, what are you talking about? Because I was always avoiding that feeling because I want to make sure that I'm still performing and I could grip, mm -hmm. you know, the bar, you know, long term. But yeah, it's interesting that, you know, this is finally kind of brought up. I had, a, so I had a client, the first time I ever had anybody tell me that they didn't want to pump was, uh, I was... God, I was young. I was probably 22, and this guy comes and hires me. Kind of this, this kind of relatively skinny but strong looking dude, and he comes in and he looks fit already, and he says, "I need to improve my performance. I I race motocross." And I said, "Oh, awesome! You know, we're gonna build muscle, make you stronger, this, that, and the other." He said, "Okay, one of the big problems is when my I, if my forearms get pumped, he goes, I'm screwed. I'm fucked." And I, and I remember thinking, like, you're crazy. You don't want to get a pump. And then I thought about it. I'm like, well, wait a minute. It's true. When you do get a pump, you do lose function for sure. It feels good and everything in the gym, but you do lose function. And so I had to really uh, examine how I trained this guy to minimize the pump. Um, and then fast forward, when I started doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, really, really hard, that happened to me because you grip so much on the gi that if your forearms would get a pump, you were fucked. Your hands didn't work anymore. You lose yeah, your grip. Locks up. And then you were screwed. Yeah. And so one of the best things you could do to help prevent this from happening, believe it or not, is to always, always train in the super high rep range. Now, at first, when you train in the super high rep range, you're going to get a crazy, crazy pump. But then over time, your body adapts you adapt and yeah. you stop getting a pump from it. And so really it's just about training lots and lots and lots of static holds, uh, static squeezes, lots of high reps. Well, you want to train through the pump, get to the point where your body doesn't happen anymore. This also, so you know, I love to to also give people um, tools that that are out there that I think get overused. That this is this is a great example of somebody that I would recommend like fat grips to. You have a very specific re thing that you're trying to adapt and accomplish, like. What a great what a great tool for someone like you. Because then whenever you do your bicep curls, your shoulder press, all this thing, you've got these fat grips on all these dumbbells and barbells, and you're gonna you're gonna get a pump like crazy mm -hmm. at first. But like Sal was saying, after you've done that enough times before long, you're going to really improve your grip strength mm -hmm. and then that and then the pump will diminish. Yeah. Have and you guys also ever those rotating grips mm -hmm. and yeah, and things like that, just because now uh, you know, when you go back to like a stationary grip. Uh, you're 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 gonna respond a right. lot better to that, and you're not gonna like get that reaction right away from your body. Have you guys ever trained or worked with like people who are really really good and into rock climbing? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Ever look at their hands? Oh yeah. Form? So ben, ben Greenfield. Yeah, Ben Greenfield is a great example. Yeah, a great of this. example. It's a different kind. And here's the thing about you know we say this all the time on the show that your strength adaptations are very specific to the type of training that you do. So uh, let me explain in the context of rock climbing. Let's say, like, you look at me, and I lift, and I could deadlift, let's say, 550 pounds, and I got a really strong grip, but my grip is really strong when I grab a bar, okay? And when you grab a bar, there's a specific di diameter that I'm gripping around that my muscles are strong within that particular range of motion. As I move outside of that, I start to get weaker and weaker. In other words, as I open my hand, it's not going to have the same kind of strength because most of the strength that I'm training is around the diameter uh, of a bar. So what you want to do as a rock climber, if you want to really strengthen your grip, definitely strengthen your grip around things like skinny bars and fat bars, but also, you know, get strengthen your grip with two fingers, mm -hmm. one finger, fingertips, you know, where you're holding or where you're opening and closing, like all these, because you need all kinds of different ranges of motion in your forearm flexors and extensors, because when you're grabbing onto rocks, sometimes your grip is, your hands are going to be very spread out. Sometimes they're going to be clasped a little bit more. Mm -hmm. A lot of the pressure may be on fingerprints. Other times it may be more towards the middle of the finger. 
So it's important that you train all these. So like when I used to train like jujitsu guys, for example, when we would do pull-ups, if I was working their back and just trying to get them stronger, we'd use a regular regular grip. And of course, I wouldn't use wrist straps on, on any of these guys because they need strong grips. But then towards the end of the workout, I would have them t- bring me bring a gi to the gym. So they'd bring the top of the gi, and I'd swing the gi over the the pull-up bar, and they'd hold on to the sleeves, and they'd do pull-ups like that. Now, why would I do that? Well, in jujitsu. If you're pulling and gripping, you're grabbing the gi. You're not grabbing a bar. And believe it or not, it's very different. I remember uh, the first time I did this, you know, I pride in having my having a strong grip, but when I would grab the gi, it would it would hurt. It wasn't comfortable for me. So I had to train my ability to 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 be strong in that specific type of thing. For rock climbing, I've seen gyms now have um, those little rock uh, like I don't know what they're called. They're like grips mm-hmm. on yeah. pull-up bars. Yeah. To simulate, you know, rock climbing. Our, the golds that we go to has that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that's a great, you know, great way to do pull-ups. Oh, yeah, yeah I used to do like that. that. I used to do the, uh, if you get two towels, you bring it over and you have to, yeah. like, grip and, and both of them together. So I'm gripping and I'm pulling at the same time. Um, there's just a lot of different ways. It's, it's really exposing yourself to different variables as far as, like, the grips are concerned. Like Sal's saying, the different um, variables, whether you're doing it with just a couple fingers or, you know, just different hand grips. Um, so you just want to expose the more of those, but like, yeah, high, high reps, you know, high volume, and then, then do these long isometric holds to, uh, establish like that, that, that firm grip to, to work your way through it. Something to do also that we haven't mentioned that I used to love to do with clients like this is, um, rice buckets where I don't know what the term that or what the name of the exercise is. Oh yeah. Push your, yeah, get a, get a, a five gallon bucket, go to Costco, get one of those big, bags of rice fill it up and then you know do exercises for time inside the rice you know so you talk about sal getting all the extenders and everything like that oh, in, yeah. involved too like you're just opening and closing your fist like you do that for a couple minutes and watch how pumped you know where it. that comes from that's a that's a kung fu uh in kung fu they would train their grip and they wouldn't use they would use rice and then they move to to fine sand yeah. more coarse sand coarser sand than pebbles and so the idea is to, to advance through the different, you know, mm. the different degrees of, uh, of density. And then punch and, boards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you put your, you, what you're, you're supposed to do is you strike your hands through, you grip your hands, open your hands, pull them out type of deal and practice through the different densities. I used to do that. And then here's another old school uh, grip and forearm exercise that I learned from, uh, I can't remember the book, but it was an old book. It was written in the, in the early 1900s. It was really, really old. And it was, you'd grab a, a piece of newspaper, which if you can find one, you might not be able to find one anymore, but you get one of the big pages and you grab the corner of it and just using one hand, you slowly crumple it up and draw it in and crumple the whole page in one hand and squeeze it and then do that with another, uh, you know, another page of the newspaper. And I used to do that and that was a gnarly, gnarly hand workout, kind of an old school exercise. That, I've heard you mention that one before. I've never tried that before. It sounds stupid, but I swear I mean, to God. I can picture it. I can picture doing <laughs> that and how much that would exercise your hands for sure. Oh, Just it's- trying to crumple it up with one hand without using the other one. Oh, it's absolutely phenomenal. I love doing it. But, you know, <laughs> but yeah, besides that, here's something else I'm going to throw in here because I know he's asking about the forearm pump and training the high reps all the time so you don't get that pump. But here's the other thing that rock climbers – don't do enough of that I think they need to do more of is uh, rowing. So uh, rock climbers tend to focus a lot on pull-ups and pulling their body overhead. Oh, uh, yeah. Rowing has got some carryover, but the main reason why you want to do rowing is the one of the- Contracted shoulders. Yeah, c- yeah, because you get really lat dominant if yeah. all you do is pull down. And I know those are the main muscles involved, and so you need to have really strong lats. But you want to also strengthen that shoulder girl by pulling- you know, pulling more towards your body with rows that that'll help you a little bit. And then the other thing too is, if you're competitive at rock climbing, definitely work your legs out, uh, but don't get super big heavy legs. Uh, that's another big one. Uh, yeah, I would focus more on higher reps and deep ranges of motion so you can swing your leg up into high positions. You don't necessarily want big quads, hamstrings, and glutes right. when you're trying to do you know lots of rock climbing. Yeah. Next question is from Grace Hills zero one four. Do you think there is any benefit to warming up in longer ranges of motion? For example, doing deadlift warm-ups with weights at a two-inch deficit and then doing your workout sets or working sets from the floor. Uh, I definitely think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this is actually a really, really good idea because I, I'm, I'm picturing what, tends, what happens when people tend to hurt themselves when they're working out. And in many times, not always, but many times, the reason why you hurt yourself is because you moved – 
a half an inch outside right. of the range of motion you're comfortable. Right. You know what I mean? So like like I'm doing a squat and I'm going heavy and I shift or I go down just a half an inch lower than I normally do, lose tension, mm-hmm. and then I end up, you know, injuring myself. So it makes sense to to warm up in a longer range of motion than in the one that you train in. And and I tend I think I do this instinctu- instinctively. I tend to warm up with more of an exaggerated range of range of motion mm-hmm. than when I go heavy. So I, I think this is a, a really good idea. I can also see lots of value to you training in that deficit for a little while and then going after like a, you know, if you were if I was trying to PR on my deadlift and, you know, I I don't do deficits that often. So doing deficits for you know, a couple weeks leading up to like me going after a big lift. Like, I think there's a lot of value in that, not just warming up. I think actually training in that deficit. Uh, and then for that exact reason, what you're saying, Sal, is we're going to, you're going to be, obviously you're going to be weaker uh, mm-hmm. in, in the deficit than you are, would, would be off of pulling off the floor. And so training that way for a couple weeks before you go after a really heavy normal lift, I, I would, I would. Yeah, it's interesting because you think if you're, expanding on on the strength curve by going down you know a couple inches uh you know you're you're going to immediately respond in a stronger position Mm -hmm. uh, from there so i mean logically that would that would make sense to me and that you do see like people doing jefferson curls and things Mm -hmm. like that to to really warm up the posterior chain and it is that, that you go to that excessive range to where now you bring it back to like the working range um which i do i do find a lot of value in that now you also have to have the mobility to do this too, yeah. though. Yeah. So I mean, uh, sometimes there's there's tips and tools that people will recommend like this, but if you haven't done the due diligence of getting yourself in a place where you can actually do it without your your body breaking down, you know, because that's another thing too. Is like, okay, well, it's this could be a, a really good tool for some people, but then there could be a lot of people that. You know, once they go, at, you know, in a deficit position like that, their form breaks down, and then so then you're at then you're at risk more than anything else. Well, and it's you're- not about being hypermobile either. So it's not about like trying to get, uh, you know, further in your range of motion without strength. So you know, whatever that looks like, you have to like, you know, build the intent in there to be able to get your central nervous system to respond and really squeeze and. Um, Get uh get some strength there as you go to pull back and not just stretch it out. Yeah, if you th- if you think about it, well, I mean, this is kind of what priming is. You know, yeah, it, it, it this is. is more of a general. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna prime with the exercise. You know, that I'm gonna do in my workout type of you know session. But this is really what priming is all about. Like priming aims to can get you more connected because what you want to do is the ide- ideally your warm up or priming as we would call it. What it should do is it should make you feel very connected to the lift. So when mm. you get into the lift and you're you more it, hyper responsive, yeah, you feel strong, you feel tight, everything. You feel like you're in the in the groove is what we used to say back in the day, right? Do mm-hmm. you feel like you're in the groove when you're lifting? And everybody knows it. Like if you've been lifting for a long time, you know what it feels like to get under a barbell or, or you know to bench it or squat it, and for you to lower the weight and it be heavy, and you and, and you to feel off a little bit. Like there goes your strength. Like as you feel off a little bit, you're not able to generate as much force and the risk of injury goes up much higher. And so that's really the goal of, of warming up. You know, it's not about increasing elasticity in muscles. It's not about, you know, more blood flow. That should, those are all side effects of what's well, happening. The, the goal really is to feel more connected to what you're doing uh, when you are doing the work. That's why I feel like it's important that you don't, uh, you know, use this as a static stretch. Like that, that you could actually injure yourself with that technique, you know, going past that range of motion and just trying to stretch an anchor and, and elongate the muscle versus like, you know, trying to do a working rep with that and, and get your central nervous system to respond yes. accordingly. Yes, one thing that I like to do is I like to get into the deepest part of a rep that I can get in with control. So I'll make sure I say that with control because I could go a little further and hurt myself. And then I like to hold the rep there. But what I'm not doing is relaxing at that position. No. Because I've seen people do this with a squat where one thing that I do, because depth is always hard for me on a squat, is I'll get under a bar, I'll go down as low as I can with control, and then I'll hold that bottom position for three to five seconds. And really what I'm trying to do is really connect to the weakest part of the rep that you know that's weakest for me. Now I've seen other people do it where they get into a squat and they go down and they sit and it's like they're relaxing. Right. That is a terrible thing to do. You don't want to 
sit there and relax with all this weight on your on your back without su- you don't want your joints to support you. You don't words. want to be unsupported. Yeah, you want to support yourself with muscle, and because it, it does two things: a, it keeps you safe uh, if muscle supporting you and you've got tension, your risk of injury is much lower, um, and b. You're connecting to a range of motion that you may not normally have lots of connection to. So then when you get under the bar and you do your normal reps, you feel way more solid and secure and you can lift more weight and you just get, you know, better results. So this makes sense. I like this, you know, warming up in longer ranges of motion, but you got to have control of it. You have to maintain that muscle tension. You got to have that muscle tension. And now ideally you would use something like maps prime. That would be mm-hmm. the ideal thing to do. Go through maps prime, identify what you need to do for your body, what's going to work. Because here's the thing, too. I can think of a lot of people who doing a deadlift, warming up at two-inch deficit would be terrible. No, that's what, that was my point of like yeah. that, is that absolutely I think this can be beneficial for some a lot of people that have the mobility. Yeah, some if people. You, yeah, exactly. If you have the mobility to do that, I think this, this is, a, is a great idea. But I also know that there's a lot of people that have a hard time doing a deadlift, much less doing one in a deficit. And that if I were to do a deficit deadlift with them, I would see them mechanically break down. And so that's what you got to be careful. And that's why I say something like Maps Prime would be superior mm-hmm. because it's it's you know in in the program we have a compass where you you test your own body and figure out what you need to do for your body to prime. Because again, in a situation like this, you know this kind of a warm up with the deficit may be great. It may be terrible. You know, if you're somebody with terrible ankle mobility, you can't maintain your your a, a stable spine, mm-hmm. and you're and then you put yourself in a deficit to warm up. You're you're not warming up very well. You're oh, not, you're any not loss of control well. is exactly a detriment. Next question is from Eliz Tries. What would your advice be for females trying to shift to lifting heavy weights without a training partner or trainer? How can someone get over the mental hurdle? of lifting a heavy weight and not being afraid of hurting themselves. Mm. When's the last time you guys had a, a spotter? Yeah, no. For I never time. work out with a spotter. Yeah. Well, no, I do with Jessica. You know, but, here's – and, yeah, I'm the, I agree. Like, I – I, but here's here's the thing that I get where this can be really challenging, especially in the squat, right? The squat is probably the scariest thing for somebody – to, it feels like you have yeah. nowhere to go. Right. <laughs> you, it feels like that. And, and you need to the, know how to bail, too. What, you know what? We need to do this. We yeah. haven't done this yet. I've been meaning to do this for a long time, and I've had oh, people what DM. Great, what a great video. Yes, so and, and how to bail yep. on heavy weight. Like, this is, uh, this is a good video that we should do. We haven't done a video like this on the YouTube channel, so this... I'll have Doug put a note for us to do this for sure. I remember the the two. It was the squat, which was very important, you know, as far as like the bail technique, and then also like mm-hmm. power clean. I remember going through that that process. Man, that was that was a crazy uh, learning curve for it's me. It's funny because we teach. So when I was a kid and I first started doing judo, okay, in, judo is a full contact grappling, you know, art, and the goal of judo is to throw your opponent on their back. Uh, for a score, and then you win the match. Now, when I when you first start doing judo, the first three to six months, all you're doing is learning how to fall. They're not teaching you any throws. They're not teaching you a, lo- a whole lot of techniques on how to defeat your opponent. They're teaching you how to fall down without getting hurt. Resistance training, we we don't we don't approach it like it's a skill, you know, because mm-hmm. if you really if you really think about it, if you're learning how to do these lifts. One of the first things you should learn is how to, how take, to get, get out from it. How to, how to rack a weight. In other words, how to get the weight to your shoulders or your back or your chest. For example, how to do a chest press. This is I used to teach all my clients this. It's, I never handed them the dumbbells and said, here, do the reps. I would show them this is how you properly do it and this is how you set them down properly. Because right. there's a technique to getting the weight in position and there's mm-hmm. a technique to getting out of a, a, a scary situation, just like there's a technique to doing the exercise. Right. So it's a very important thing to practice. So so that all being said, the, you know, the question is, what's our advice to, to females trying to lift heavy weights? Now, here's this is the funny thing about this, too. Is, is uh, It doesn't really matter the sex here. Yeah, no, it yeah. doesn't. Although more often than not- The intimidation not, factor, yeah. though, for, yeah. I mean, there there is that. Like, I think- Guys tend to oh, like it's okay. Go- it's okay with slamming weights and dropping weights, and you know that's part of like some of the culture. Which I feel like you know women could get into that too, mm-hmm. like just as just as good, and like it just has to be comfortable. No, I can appreciate this because this has been some. This has been a conversation with Katrina and I because she's been with me many times where I'm squatting and. You know, she'll she'll ask me, "Do you want me to spot when she knows I'm pushing like really heavy weight?" I'm like, "No, no, no, just let me bail." You know, and that, I'd rather that. I'd actually rather 
be by myself, even with a spotter there, and just let me bail on the way yep. because I feel safe for that than me relying on you to give me the right assistance out of the hole of a 400-something pound that, squat. You're probably more likely to hurt yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. To grind it out and then ha I, I, when I have see Have her the, hugging you and trying yeah, to I pull it up. Right. I'm like, I almost just, got hurt, yeah, from a spotter trying to help me up. and uh, It was actually to my detriment. almost hurt. Like, 100% because then I'm, then I'm more concerned about I don't want to bail because I got them behind me yeah. and I don't want to drop the weight back on them. Yeah. So then I'm really trying to grind it out and then in hopes that they're giving me enough assistance to get out of that hole I don't know I would way rather be by myself and no one around and then let me bail the way but then I also get you know that was something for her that I've been trying to help her out with is you know it's okay that's why you set the safety racks you know, when you're at the bottom, if you can't get out of the hole like that, you Just put it down. Yeah, you let it. And, you and let it roll off your back. The way the way you're sitting in a squat, if you're squatting properly, right? Obviously, that's first. Like, if you have when when I see people get hurt here, they do it wrong. They already have poor mechanics, and then they're going too heavy. Like, if you have an excessive forward lean, mm -hmm. and you get stuck in into a really deep squat, and you see people kind of fold over forward, <laughs> sandwich, right? That, I mean, that's because you have bad form, and you probably shouldn't have been going that heavy in the first place. But if you have good mechanics and good form, um, you know, I'm always trying to, in which Katrina does, I'm encouraging her to push the weight further. I'm like, listen, if you're getting three to five reps, no ch no problem. Like, you absolutely can go further well, in weight. Well, they have now, they have these these safety bars that you can put in, in racks, which you set up ahead of time, which, you know, that's a whole process to learn. But, um, you know, you could go to the depth that's just under, like, your depth, which you could easily just drop down and, like, get out from under it. So. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, a lot of gyms now, not all of them, but a lot of gyms now have the safety racks. So and if what you do is you just set the safety rack like just below where you're gonna right, squat like two to. inches below. That's it. Yeah. And so if you can't make it, you you don't even have to bail. You can literally just sit down. Yeah, you can just sit, just sit it down. down. Right. Same yeah. thing with the bench press. A lot of bench presses have these little safety arms where if you can't make it, you just put it down. I've been pinned under a bar before. Uh -huh. You can still get out of that too because <laughs> yeah. there is a technique where you can roll it down your chest and sit up. I've had the weight good. fall off and do the yeah. on both right. sides. You know it happens. Yeah. So. It's a it's a good question though, and it's it's something that I think uh, I I mean I totally understand. I know I get that it's a. I mean I was intimidated to bail on the weight for a very long time. So well, I, well part of it is this. Part of it is the whole the whole mentality of I need to train to failure. Yeah, that's when I true. used to lift weights like that, yeah. when I used to lift weights where I have to go until I can't lift the weight anymore, for sure I needed a spotter. Mm -hmm. Always. Like, mm -hmm. fuck, come spot me, dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go until I can't move anymore. But now, and, and now I don't do that anymore. I lift maybe, and I stop about one or two reps before I fail, which incidentally is a superior way to train anyway. You're going to get better results anyway by doing it that way. But because I stop two, you know, one to two reps before failure, I don't have that fear. I stop. I rack the weight knowing that the next rep may be the one that I, I fail at. And so I just stop right there. And so that's that's the other thing you want to pay attention to. So when it says lifting heavy weights, you can lift heavy weights, and but don't lift so heavy that you're afraid that you're not going to be able to get the bar up. You know what I'm saying? You're not lifting to fail. You're not trying to hit a PR. You're just going in there. You're, 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 you're lifting with challenging weight, but it's also a weight that you know you could do your reps and then rack the bar. Next question is by... Fitness by Juna. Do you think the breast implant illness stuff is real or BS? This must be you, Sal. Yeah. You're, all is, you're all over the breast implants lately. Well, well you know what? Well, yeah. We've seen questions like quite a few of these recently because it's making its rounds in hmm. the wellness world. So you're seeing like these wellness uh, like representatives who are getting their breast implants taken out and are saying that they had breast implant illness, which I've never heard this term before up until – uh, maybe this last couple years. And it's women who are saying things like uh, autoimmune issues, um, you know, they can't sleep, gut issues, like all these like mysterious illnesses or, or symptoms that they got and they're blaming their breast implants. And there's all this controversy as to whether or not it's the implants that are causing it or not. Now, my personal opinion, I've done lots of research on this. First off, if you put anything foreign inside your body, right. There is a chance that your body may reject yeah. it. Y yeah, you may have all kinds of different side effects, right? The other thing, too, is with breast implants or any implants is your body many times will have an immune response where it'll create a shell around it. It'll create all the scar tissue around it as if your body's trying to wall it off mm -hmm. to protect yourself. That is an immune response. I could see how that could cause maybe a systemic immune response in the body. And then the other thing, too, is you know these implants are made out of materials that 
they, you may absorb some of this. I, I can't imagine if you have silicone in your body for 30 years that you're not going to get some of it in your system. Now, that being said, and I want to play devil's advocate here, I, it, is this, and I don't know because I haven't, I've probably done way less research on this than you have, I would think that because the time we live in with the ability for us to share information, there is also this, um, it seems like there's way more people having issues with it than before just because people can put it out there and receive it. Mm -hmm. I think statistically speaking, if this was a major, I think there would be, it would be a a big, big fucking deal Mm -hmm. where people would not be able to do it. If If the percentage was high of women that were getting you know, these illnesses yeah, from, right. from breast implants, I would think that there well, would be- Well, you start listing the symptoms off and, and, you know, it starts to resonate, you know, with a lot more people. And now they have something they can, you mm-hmm. know, pin it down towards where, yeah, it's interesting that, I mean, the wellness community, I'm sure that they've gone through like the whole process of like the food and, you know, exercise and sleep and all, and then they're still battling something there, you know, that, that they're having an autoimmune issue from. So that that's sort of like the next progression from that. Well, maybe it's my breast implants, you know, who yeah. knows? So, you know, I, there is a, there, there may be an association between breast implants and, you know, autoimmune type issues, although the studies haven't really made a connection. There is a slightly increased risk of a certain type of breast cancer with a certain type of implant. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, again, everybody knows about it, and the increased risk is, is slight, and you're usually told this if you go get the implants. Here's the thing. that The symptoms of, of what they're calling breast implant illness are vague and kind of general, hmm. and so it's hard to, to point to what it is. Right, because you talk about autoimmune issues, and if you're saying that it could potentially have a st- systemic effect on the body, that there's also a lot of other things that could cause that too. There so, are. So yeah. to tease that out and to say that it's it's just the breast implant, so... You know, I, I I would be weary of the the uh, the information of like how for sure all this is, just because we would be seeing lawsuits like crazy if there was if there was a major thing that they could actually connect this to. Yeah, but again, th- like your point, you said, Sal, I agree with that. Is like, you know, if we put anything inside inside of our body that is foreign, yeah, I don't think it's going to be like totally nothing. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. I I agree with that. That that that's part of the risk that you take by doing something like that. I mean, we weren't. I mean, we did not evolve to stick plastic inside of our our chest. I just, which also makes me weary about what we see coming now down the future too, with all these, you know, chips and tools that we can now put underneath our oh, skin yeah. to do yeah. things. Like, I mean, this is going to be a a thing of the future that we're going to be concerned about. Is like, it, does it belong inside of our right. body? Right, and uh, it makes me think like how creative they're going to get. You know, three D printing wise with using actual biomaterial. And maybe using, you know, some of your own, I don't know, like stem cell or something to create these products. I don't know. Like, like growing boobs. Like growing, you? yeah, some, maybe. some boob tissue, yeah, you yeah. know, that, that, that could actually, you know. That would be wild. Work yeah. better. It could be, I mean, it could be a possibility in the future. So I don't yeah. know. But I mean, it, again, it, it is really interesting. I don't think, I think anything you do is going to have some risk of something. Um, but, you know, the evidence is, is, is pretty inconclusive. And here's the other thing to consider, right? We just had uh, Dr. Cabral on the show and he was talking about how, you know, the central nervous system is the thing that gets affected first, then it goes to the immune system and, you know, down the line. Mm-hmm. And let's say you're, let's say you're a woman with breast implants and you have all these, these symptoms uh, like autoimmune type issues and fatigue and all these weird symptoms and you can't figure out what's going on. And then you think, oh shit, you read an article and you think, oh crap. It's my breast implants. I have breast implant il- illness. Yeah. So now you have this belief that it's breast implant illness. It's causing this 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 reaction because you know it's it's a sympathetic state. You're stressed out about something. It's in your body. Now that it's in your body, now you really don't want it, and you're thinking about it over and over again. Yeah. And getting it removed is going to probably give you relief because now you've eliminated that extra stress. And 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 I'm not saying this is the problem. I'm just saying. This could be a contributing factor. So there's all these things that we need to consider mm-hmm. when we look at these types of things. So right. it's, it's a tough one to speculate on, uh, you know, I guess from our position, but anyway, yeah. you know, teach their own. All right. So check it out. If you go to mindpumpfree.com, you can get a free guide. Uh, the latest guide we have is how to squat like a pro. There's some advanced techniques in there. They're totally free. They don't cost anything. Just go to mindpumpfree.com and download one of them or download all of them. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, 
and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic, nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.